sa pangmalakas sa palakpak po para sa ating Diyos na buhay, na buhay, na buhay. Amen. Kagaya po ng sinabi namin sa inyo kanina, that the goal of this conference is to inspire, inform, encourage, and ngayon po ay makakarinig ulit tayo ng amazing na inspiration mula po sa ating uh, kapatid na ngayon po talaga ginag- talagang uh, tinitingala po hindi lang sa hindi lang sa sa religious world but kundi sa even in show business. And I'm telling you God is using his children in showbiz. All right to inspire people to let the gospel okay be proclaimed to this world. So meron pong ma- gusto kong tawagin na pastor po namin ng FIJ City Church. I want to call on Pastor Jerick Soriano here to introduce our special guest for this afternoon. Come on, give it up for Pastor Jerick Soriano. My twin brother. We look alike. How are you, brother? Yeah, I'm You're good? You're good? Yeah. All right, all right. Here, I got a mic. Thanks. Wow, Jesus pala is in us already. Amen. Amen. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, we are already blessed. We are already qualified. We are highly favored. Praise God for that. Even if you don't know that, that's who you are already. Correct? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm here to introduce somebody from my family. I want to tell you that this, this is inside information. Hindi niyo po alam itong information na ito, ha? She makes the best chocolate chip cookies. No, really. <laughs> Come to our house and, and see. She is a great homemaker. She is a wonderful mother to my grandson, Sevi. <laughs> 100% wonderful mother. And, uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't be more blessed to have this uh, lady in my life. So again, I don't want to make this too long. I want to introduce to you my daughter in grace. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Tony Gonzaga. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Siya talaga yung kamukha ni Sevi, no? Si Pastor Jerick, si Daddy Jerick. And yes, Chambi Chambi. Natutulog na siya ngayon. Gusto mo bang Chambi Chambi? Huwag muna dito. Iba yon, Pang iba yon. Anyway, magandang magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. God is good. And all the time. Amen. There is only one name who should be glorified today, and that is the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why we are all here. We are here to celebrate His love, to glorify His name, and to give back everything to Him because everything belongs to Him. Anyway, I feel so blessed na naimbitahan po ako dito nila Pastor Arnel na maging part ng uh, celebration natin, create Malayang Pilipino music. And I believe most of you are worship leaders. Tama po ba yan? Ah, sa iba-ibang lugar. San po dito may pinakamalayong pinanggalingan? Ang layo. Ah, sure. Ang layo nga nun. Well, anyway, we are so blessed this afternoon na nandito tayo. We are all safe, we are healthy, and we're here to worship and glorify God. Sometimes that's just all we need to know. That Jesus is love. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves me. That's the first song na natutunan ko sa Sunday school. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. I always go back to that core that no matter what I'm going through in life, no matter who left me, who hurt me, who rejected me, I know I am accepted, I am loved, I am valued because Jesus loves me. It's so easy to be depressed nowadays with social media, with Facebook, with the news, and everything that we see around us. 
everything is so depressing. So we keep looking for answers here. We keep looking for answers there. We keep looking for answers on the phone and our laptop. But all we really have to do is look up. Because when you look up, you will realize that someone 2,000 years ago who lives in heaven went down on earth to die for you so you can live with him. And that's how much he loves you. So don't ever feel like you're worthless. Don't ever feel like you have nothing to offer. Don't ever feel like you're just here on earth for nothing. Because each and every one of us has a purpose, okay? I always have no confidence in sharing my life testimony because I felt like it's not as strong as the other testimonies. And then I continued living on earth and <laughs> nabuhay lang ako. Sabi ko baka may mga pagdadaanan pa. Baka masubok ni God. And then, ayun, nakarating naman ako ng 34 years old. 34 years old na ako ngayon. Ayan. Mukha lang 33, ano? O 32. Hindi. 34 years old na ako. And um, for everything that I've been through, I believe that God has a journey for each and every one of us that we can use as our testimony. Our tests that we have been through can be our life's testimony. Anyway, kasi nung bata nga ako, wala lang akong talagang pangarap, kung di kumanta. Yun lang ang dream ko noon, kaya nakita niyo naman, kumakanta ako kanina. <laughs> Laging ganun. Kaya, basta gusto ko lang talaga kumanta. Yun lang ang dream ko, gusto ko lang maging singer. Kasi sa Taytay, lahat ng singing competitions na panalunan ko. <laughs> noon. Totoo yan. Pero totoo naman yan. Para nun sa hanggang sa dumating sa point na yung Ripesa, merong Ripesa noong 1991, naban na ako sa Ripesa. Rizal uh, Primary School Competition. Hindi na ako pwedeng sumali kasi every year ako yung nananalo. Ano yun? Parang provincial competition ng mga school. Tapos may singer. So lagi ako nananalo. So sabi ko, wow, ako talaga ang singing sensation dito sa amin. Ako na talaga ang ano dito, mahusay umawit talaga. Yun talaga yung tingin ko. Siyempre, pag bata ka, yun ang tingin mo sa sarili mo. Pag nananalo ka, nagkaka-trophy ka. So you feel like, you feel so pumped up. Parang, ah, ito na ang gusto kong gawin sa buhay. So I told my dad at the age of 9 years old, mga 10, eh, lagi ako nagpa-practice sa church. Lagi akong kumakanta sa praise and worship. So talagang praktisado. I told my dad na, Daddy, gusto kong mag-artista. Gusto kong kumanta sa TV. Sabi ko, feeling ko hindi lang ako pang taytay. Pang television din ako. So sabi ng daddy ko, okay, so support ko yan. Maganda yung pangarap mo na yan. So, malis kami ng taytay. Pumunta kami sa mga... Noong time kasi na yun, ang swerte nga ng mga singers ngayon, eh, may Pinoy Big Brother, may The Voice, may Pino Pilipinas Got Talent. Noong panahon noon, ang singing competition lang, nasa noon time show. ba? Nasa Itbulaga, o San Linggo na po sila, yung mga Beerit Queen. So, nandun lang. So, seasonal. So, tuwing may audition para sa singing, a-attend kami lagi. Tapos, Dahil nga, punong-puno ako ng confidence na sabi ko, ako ang talaga nga namang pinagmamalaki ng taytay. Makikita nyo. Kakanta ako dyan, mananalo ako. Ah, pagdating ko naman sa mga audition, ako naman ang laging hindi natatanggap. Sabi ko, oh my gosh, bakit kaya ganun? Nakala ko ang galing-galing ko ng kumanta. Sa Manila pala, mas maraming magaling kumanta. Lalo na pag may narinig akong taga Cebu, ha, ba't parang gano'n yung boses niya? Parang galing balon, ang ganda lalo. So parang yung confidence ko, unti-unting nawawala. Kasi they realize mo, coming from a small town, when you go to the big city, yung malalaking dreams mo, it becomes a reality na 
hindi naman pala pwedeng mangyari yung pangarap mo. And then, but I never stop auditioning. Nag-audition pa rin, nag-audition pa rin, hanggang sa nakapasa ako sa isang singing competition. Sabi ko, ito na talaga. Nakapasa na ako dito. Pagkakanta ko dito, mananalo ako. Ako na ang next Regine Velasquez. <laughs> yung, sa laki ng boses ko, talaga Regine Velasquez pa yung pinangarap ko. Kasi yung time na yan, laki-laki talaga ng boses ko. Ewan ko, parang nananakot. Basta, basta ganoon lang lagi po. Sabi ko, ako na talaga ang aawit. So, ayan, nakapasa ako. I remember it was Star Search. Sa Channel 9 siya pinalabas. Ang host niya ay si Imelda Papin. At ang kinanta ko nun ay narito ako. Tapos, yes, mataas ang boses ko nun. Puyat ako. Kaya parang salamat na lang siguro. <laughs> hindi, hindi nga galing akong Korea. Kaya, ang nyo sa'yo. <laughs> hindi, ibig sabihin, so yun na. Okay, kakanta na ako. Narito ako. Tapos nung nag-rehearsal ako, syempre na ibigay ko lahat. Sabi nila, sabi ng mga staff, sabi ng mga ano, ito mananalo tong batang to. Magaling tong bata to. Mga 10 years old ako nun. Ito, ito, ito mananalo. Maganda yung boses niya. Tapos yung kinantanong isa, hindi narito ako. Parang ano lang siya. Di ba nung time na yun, parang pag-contest, dapat Regine Velasquez kasi uh, birit siya. So ang kinanta niya, parang mga... Ewan ko, ako'y Pilipino ata yung kinanta niya, o bayan ko. Parang, ba talaga, basta luma, sabi ko. Hmm, hindi pa uso yung kinanta niya, talagang ako na talaga to. So, sure win na talaga. Hanggang sa nag-taping sila, ang part namin, na-tape na, mga 2am na ng umaga. E 7am, nakaredy na yung boses ko. 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. Bakit hindi pa kumakanta? Ang lamig sa studio. Ito na, 2 a.m. Oh, kayo ng dalawa ang maglalaban. Kasi madami palang kategory nung time na yon. Nung kakanta na ako, ang linis. Sobrang linis. Pagdating sa Puso't isip ko ay isang Yung pu... Di ba may ano yun eh? May, may ganun yun eh. Di ba? Alam niyo ba yung narito ako? Yung Puso Recep Ko Basta ganon Basta yung part na Hindi ko makakalimutan yun Kasi after nun sinumpa ako yung kantang yun Sabi ko sa daddy ko Hindi ko nakakantahin yan Kahit kailan Hanggang sa mamatay ako Hindi ko na Ayoko na yung kanta Alam mo kung bakit Pagdating dun sa Puso this Pumiyok ako Nakakalungkot talaga Alam mo pagkapiyok ko Sabi ko Oh my gosh Siyempre, obvious na yun. Paano ka pa mananalo? Yung pinaka-high note, doon ka pumiyok. So, true enough, ang in-announce na winner, yung kumanta ng ako ay Pilipino ata. Yung makabayan ang nanalo. So, sabi ko, wala to. Ano ba to? So, yun, yung time na yun, doon yung first ever heartbreak ko sa industry. Sabi ko, ang hirap pala. Akala ko, after noon, pagkatapos ng heartbreak, okay na. Uh, yung susunod nun, papasahan mo na. But you know what? After that audition, I failed every single audition I ever went to. Lahat, sunod-sunod yon Bagsak, hindi papasa, hindi papasa, hindi makakapasok, hindi makakapasok. The cycle went on for 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 years old ako eh. 17 years old ako. Akala ko, magiging big break ko pa nun sa singing. Ang naging big break ko pa, I love you, Piolo! Sabi ko, paano ba to? Singer ang gusto ko. Bakit naging I love you, Piolo yung naging big break ko? So, so basta it was 10 years of an ongoing cycle of I always go home rejected. Sa sampung audition na inatendang ko, 11 ang binagsak ko. Ganun talaga. Tapos naalala ko, during the time na nag-audition ako sa singing, dahil bihira lang ang audition sa singing, may narinig akong kasama dun sa audition, sabi niya, Uy, may audition daw ng modeling, yung casting sa commercial. Sabi ko, ay ano yun? Hindi, pag gusto mong lumabas sa commercial, sabi ko, ay, gusto ko rin. So sabi niya, eh may audition, so pupunta ako. Naalala ko pa noon, nag-audition ako for puns. Pagpasok ko, 
Pagpasok ko, nanliit na ako. Lahat mistisa. Sabi ko sa daddy, daddy mukhang ako yung taga kuha ng ano nila, call sheet. Hindi ako papasa dito. Sabi ng daddy ko sa akin, huwag ka magalala, darating ang time. Mauuso din yung ganyang face. Yung... <laughs> Di ko rin alam sa daddy ko eh. Mauuso din yan yung Pinay Beauty. Kasi Pinay Beauty ka eh. eh kasi during that time, I think during the 90s, yun yung mga kasikatan talaga na dapat pag uh, face commercial. Parang mistisa talaga yung gusto nila, half-half. Sabi ko, paano ba to? Sabi niya, hindi, basta mauuso din niya. But true enough, 2016, I endorsed Ponds. And I remember when I got a call from Ponds, I cried. Sabi ko sa daddy, daddy, kinuha akong endorser ng Ponds. <laughs> Sabi ng daddy ko, tinan mo, after 20 years. <laughs> that was a long time ago. And then uh, now I endorsing their age miracle. <laughs> pa age miracle. <laughs> Anyway, um, you know what? What I realized during that whole journey, those 10 years that I was going back and forth, back and forth, and I was getting anything, I was failing at every audition in life. You know why? Because I realized during that time, my purpose was for myself. I just wanted to be applauded. I just wanted to be Someone that people will look up to. Na-realize ko, kasi sinasabi ko pala noon, gusto ko yung feeling ng pinapalakpakan. Gusto ko yung feeling that they adore you, they appreciate you. I was longing to be loved. I was longing to be accepted. I was longing to, to become a part of an industry na I thought who will love me back. And then it was... At that time, nung 17 years old ako, nung buong-buo na talaga yung realization ko na, Lord, siguro hindi para sa akin to. Siguro kaya lang ako nandito kasi baka kung ano na lang yung will mo sa akin. Simula nung sunurender ko kay God, yung desire ko, yung dream ko na makapasok sa showbiz, doon nagsimula yung big break ko, yung pagsigaw ko ng I love you, Piolo. Ewan ko naman, for some reason, pagsigaw ko ng I love you, Piolo, nagka-interest sa akin ng tape office noon. Parang sinabi na, parang natutuwa daw sa'yo si Vic Soto. Um, kukunin kang semi-regular host sa Itbulaga. Siguro dahil nakita nila, sumigaw ko ng I love you, Piolo, baka sumisigaw to, baka pwede mag-host to. <laughs> Ewan ko, hindi ko na rin alam bakit yun na naging basis siguro. So my first... Um, years in show business, I was hosting. And I really didn't know why I got into hosting because I just wanted to sing. I just really wanted to sing. And I kept asking my dad. And then my dad would always tell me, many are the plants in a man's heart, but it's always God's purpose that prevails. God has a purpose for that, kung bakit kanya pinag-host. Sabi ko, hindi naman ako marunong mag-host. But at that time, you know what? Hindi ko rin na-share sa inyo eh. Kaya siguro ako naging multimedia kasi mahirap ang buhay. So, kumbaga sa katulong, dapat all around ka. Hindi ka lang nagluluto, naglilinis, naglalaba. Di ba? Pagpapasok ang katulong, anong ginagawa mo? Nagluluto lang. Ay, hindi pwede. Dapat all around. So, nung pumasok ko sa showbiz, yun ang isipan ko. Dapat dito para akong all around made. Kaya ko magluto, maglaba. So, pag sinabi nilang, <clears throat> pag nag-audition ako noon, what can you do? I can sing, I can host, I can act, I can model, I can do everything. Wow. <laughs> lagi ko sinasabi, I can do everything. Pero sa loob, 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 hindi ako marunong o Martin, mag-host. Pero bulang yung confidence ko. There's so many realizations. May pupuntahan tong testimony ko, maniwala kayo sa akin. Para lang magulo siya, pero may pupuntahan siya. No, no, See, seriously. No, because you know what? I realized my confidence at that time was was inside myself. I put my confidence in myself and I forgot to put my confidence in Christ. When I was so confident about myself, God stripped off everything that I have to make me realize that you cannot do it on your own because your talent alone will not bring you to places. I will bring you to places because I gave you that talent. Yun ang narealize ko. In life, sabi ko, kaya pala, 
That's what I also want to ask you now. Where are you putting your confidence? Are you putting your confidence in your bank account? Are you putting your confidence in your spouse? Are you putting your confidence in your child? Are you putting your confidence in your career? Do not put, yan ang sometimes pinakamalaking, pinakamalaking misconception or confusion natin sa buhay. We put our confidence in wrong places when we should just put our confidence in Christ. Hindi ba? And ako, I fail on that every single day. And thank God for my husband. He always reminds me that. My husband is the most positive, most encouraging, most wonderful. Hmm. Okay. No, because really, seriously, I realized in life, God gave me Paul because he's the person I need who will lift me up in times of, because I'm a worrier and I can't stop worrying about things. I know it's bad. And my husband will always tell me, you read the Bible 13 times. Back to back, cover to cover. Kasi nagsimula ako magbasa ng Bible, 2004. Tapos, naging ritual ko na siya. Wow, ritual. <laughs> naging habit ko na siya na kailangan in one year makatapos ako ng isang version ng Bible. So, laging ganun ang ginagawa ko. But my husband will always tell me, nagbabasa ka but you're not putting that into heart. That's why talagang napaka-important ng partner that God chooses for you. It's, he will either break you or He will either make you. And I'm very blessed that Paul is always making me into a better version of myself. So, I was known uh, for the first five, six years of my life as a host. Uh, I did Eat Bulaga, then I transferred to ABS. I did What's Up, What's Up. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, was up, was up. I did MRS hosting. I hosted an ASAP. And then later on came the singing. And then I kept asking my dad, bakit kaya, bakit kaya ano? Bakit kaya nauna yung hosting? And then, na sumunod yung singing. And then I realized, now that I've been hosting for 20 years, I'm celebrating my 20th anniversary in show business next year. So almost 20 years na ako nagsasalita. I realized that God, <laughs> kaya nga, malat na nga ako. No, I realized that God has put me in this kind of platform, not just for me to sing, but He turned me into a host so that in times like this, I could speak for Him. So sabi ko, ah, kaya pala. Kasi I remembered, ang dami kong speaking engagements sa uh, Taytay or yung daddy ko, maraming times na nai-invite ako, sabi ko, ah, sabi ng daddy, kaya kanya ginawang host. Dahil bukod sa pagkanta, gusto niya magsalita ka for him and how he changed your life and how he touched your life and how he was with you throughout your whole journey. So I just wanna, so siguro, basically, I, what I really just wanted to share with each and every one of you is that, Sometimes, God will destroy our plans when He sees that our plans are going to destroy us. Do you get it? Have you ever planned your life and then realizing lahat ng plano mo hindi natuloy? Na-experience nyo na yun, basta pa ganito, 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 ganito. Tapos lahat hindi natutuloy. You know why? Because God sees, probably knows, or He it doesn't probably, but he knows that what you're planning for yourself is going to eventually destroy you. And we all know that. My plan for you is to give you hope and a future and never to harm you. God always has better plans in our lives. And you know what? If he was able to do it for me, the more he can do it for each and every one of you. Because God doesn't have favorites. We are all his children. We all belong to him. And if he can answer and fulfill my dreams and my prayers, he can do the same thing with you. You cannot tell me na, ano ba yan? Paano pa matutupad yung dream ko to, honey? Diyos ko, gaganong pa kayo. 50 years old na ako. Ano pang dream ang matutupad sa akin? But anything is, anything is possible with God. What I'm saying is, your breakthrough is not determined on what age you are right now. Your breakthrough is determined by God and God alone. Because He doesn't have a time frame. If you will only read the success stories of the one who 
uh, started McDonald's, Microsoft, and everybody else, they didn't become a millionaire or a billionaire at the age of 20, 21. Basta iba-iba, iba-iba yung time frame sa atin ni God. So maybe that's what I'm saying. And also, I was listening to my favorite pastor yesterday. I, I, was, listen, I was listening to his preaching. And I felt strongly about what he said because I felt that's what happened in my life. Na, he said, shallow values produces empty victories. Ang lalim, no? Pero totoo yun, kapag mali yung reason and foundation ng ginagawa mo, when you reach that pinnacle of success, you will always feel the emptiness and, the, and that void that nothing or nobody can ever fulfill because God was not the center and the foundation of that dream that you built. You may reach the, the pinnacle of success and everything, but while you're on top, you will always feel unhappy, you will feel unfulfilled, you will feel empty and parang there's no reason why it's all happening. Maybe there's, that's why may mga cases ng suicide, no? Yung mga Hollywood celebrities. So, I, I guess that's, that's just it. Um, Na-realize ko in my 20 years in the business that if God is not the foundation of what you're doing right now, then everything will feel empty. But, if you wrapped it around God's will, God's purpose, and what really God wants uh, to happen in your life, there's so much peace in your heart because you know you're at the right place, at the right time, where God really wanted you to be. Diba? So with that, pwede bang umawit pa kong isa? Ayan. No, ay kasi, diba, puro worship leaders kayo. Mostly ba, worship leaders. Ayan. And um, I'd like, I always sing this song because I believe na <coughs> that's what we all do as Christians. We always stand up for Jesus. Well, the, but the title of the song is Stand Up for Love. And I think for us, love means Jesus Christ. The, the biggest definition of love for each and every one of us is Jesus. Because God, Jesus is God's love, I, it's God's manifestation of his love for us. And that's what we all do. We all stand up for Jesus and we all stand up for love because that's just our purpose here on earth. To glorify Him, to give back all the praise and honor to Him because truly and really, everything came from Him. Amen. God bless. God bless you inyong lahat and be blessed throughout the whole day, the whole week, the whole month, the whole year. Ha? Huh? Ano yan? Pastor, ikaw naman daw. Pastor Arnold naman <laughs> Do Thank it. you so much, Tony. Alam mo thank you very much. Baby Shark. Baby Shark. <laughs> you know, kakanta yan. No, thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah. I also go to FIJ Church sa Bellevue. Yes. Yeah. Whenever I, I yes. get the chance to, we also attend there. Me and my family, si Paul and Sevi. Yes. Let's all stretch our hands to uh, Sister Tony right now. Let's just pray for her. Father, we just want to thank you for your goodness and favor. Panginoon kay Tony, maraming maraming salamat because the, the, the place that you put her, Father God, is the perfect place that she needs to be, Father, at the center of your will, Lord. And we, we, we continually declare, Father God, that she will continually shine, Lord, in her, uh, in her career, Father God, to just continually proclaim your amazing grace and love, Father God. Maraming maraming salamat because you will use her some more, Lord God, to just focus people's attention, Lord God, on you alone, the author and the finisher of our faith. We just want to thank you for the divine health. Thank you for the wisdom, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for a happy family, Lord, a great future ahead of them and, and the direct Paul and Sevi. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, for just bringing her right now, Father God, to once again inspire us, Lord God, to look to you, Lord, and your goodness for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless all of you. Tony, thank you so much. Thanks thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow.